What's up YouTube? What's going on guys? So what you're seeing over the screen right now is some warm-ups for uh, some squats I was doing the other day and there's a reason why I'm, I'm showing this and it's not to actually teach you anything today but it is going to be something I'm going to be utilizing for a case study which I'll talk about in a second but just doing some wall squats here. What today's video is going to be about is my 12-week training cycle leading me into my next meet which was built off my last training cycle of about eight weeks um, and what I want to do is show exactly what I'm going to be doing for this training block of this 12-week training cycle so the next four weeks and show you guys a look into my actual routine and my training week or last week and a half of training that I actually completed and how the workouts went. And I'm going to be doing this once a month to kind of keep you guys updated on my prep, how stuff are going or how uh, everything's feeling and going and hopefully actually utilize myself as a case study to get past quad tendinopathy for good uh, or at least manage it to get into the meat. That's what I'm doing these warm ups for. Um, mostly to get around this quad tendinopathy issue, which I've dealt with for over a year now. That's actually been the main reason why I pulled out of my last three meat preps and didn't get to actually compete. Um, what you're seeing here is some wall squats, some glute activation, and I dug really deep into the scientific literature on quad tendinopathy and found some stuff extremely helpful. And so I'm going to utilize myself as a case study, see if I can truly beat this stuff or manage it for good to actually get into a meet, be at my strongest, hit PRs on everything. And if so, at the end, I'm going to let you guys know exactly what I did to get around this because this is something a lot of lifters deal with. I uh, found that from my Instagram when I posted about possibly doing this. So many people responded saying they were dealing with quad tendinopathy and other tendinopathy issues. So I'm going to give you an insight um, and an inside look on uh, as to what I did to get around it if it ends up working out, which I think it's going to because so far it's been amazing. I just had never actually looked that in depth at the scientific literature and there's a ton of information for powerlifting and stuff uh, that we could be doing. But anyway, let's get into today's vlog. Um, what you're seeing here is my first workout of the week, my strength-based lower body day. I had a comp squat for this day. Uh, I'm building up to a set of three uh, at RP five for the first week and six for the second week. You're actually seeing the second week here. So I'm going to be skipping back and forth between week one and week two. But week one's RP five, next week's RP six, then RP seven, then RP eight. For now, no back offs. I'm just doing a ton of sets of three uh, up until I hit that top set. Then I got some comp deadlifts, same exact scheme there. Then some deficits, RDLs, uh, three by eight at RP5 the first two weeks and RP6, and then some just single limb hip thrust to finish up the workout. That was my first set there, uh, 451 pounds. Then I jumped up to uh, 473 pounds. I am using a squat bar, so it's a 55 pound bar for any of you uh, kilo uh, masterminds out there in case you think I did the math wrong. Um, this set moved really good, but my squat form is all over the place because of the quad tendinopathy issues. I just haven't locked in my squat very well the past six months, really, and I'm finally just getting into a groove now where I'm feeling pain-free because some of the stuff I'm doing to manage it. Uh, then did my deadlifts, uh, start off with 551 pounds. So I must've did, uh, buildups of sets of three on squat, maybe four sets before I actually got to my working set right there. My grip was giving out. So I decided just to just do a double instead of my set of three to build up on my dead. And then I just jumped straight to my working weight on squats. I'm doing way more buildups. Um, since I am, uh, not doing any back off work on deadlifts, I acclimate really easy. I don't need a lot more, um, building up. And because I have those stiff legged, uh, RDLs after, or excuse me, the deficit RDLs after, I'm utilizing that to really um, build up my volume. Now here, this was week one, so that was all week two you saw on the deadlift. I'm gonna go back to week two, but what I wanna show you is the difference between a lighter load, 585, uh, my week one where I actually felt stronger, but this was on non-comp equipment and I'm gonna be doing a video on that showing the difference between competition equipment and uh, non-competition equipment and how much that can actually affect your deadlift and maybe even the other lifts I'll touch on too. But I just wanted to showcase there was a lighter load on a day I actually felt way stronger and better. I had major issues even getting up to the right RPE and uh, I just had a lot of, of strength issues. Um, so I'm gonna be making that video here soon. But anyway, uh, back to week two. So finished up that 596 for a triple at RP6 or so, uh, then went on to some deficits RDL, starting off really light at 265 pounds. Then I bumped it up to 308 pounds uh, for an eight at about sub six. Right now, I'm just working on mobility more than overloading this lift right now. You can see my back is almost entering a bit of flexion at the bottom because I don't have enough mobility in uh, that hip flex state to really do these completely neutral backs, although this is better probably than most people, so I'll pat myself on the back for that. But anyway, uh, so this first uh, week or two, I'm really just kind of 
getting used to the movement and I'll be overloading it a lot more in the weeks to come. So I'm kind of basing RPs more off of, of mobility. Uh, here's day two. Now this one got a little messed up. So I got comp bench, same thing, build up to triples at the RPs for the weeks. And then I actually have some back off volume because I'm not dealing with bench issues. But this first week one workout got messed up because of the RP video I just released. I had to go uh, AMRAP my top set to show you guys uh, some of my own like RPs and how they're gauged for that video I just released. And so I kind of screwed up my own training for the sake of YouTube. So please send me love in the comment sections for doing that to myself on week one of a training cycle. Uh, but anyway, then I got some dumbbell bench, uh, 3x10, and then just some uh, boring accessory work. Nothing too fancy there. Some rows and some delts and arms to finish up. I'm not actually even going to show that, um, but this was the, the AMRAP after my top set just to, to show you guys the, the RP uh, video or, or to make that video for you. This was the actual top set I did. I did also do some back off work, just not all of it because of the AMRAP that I did. So I did two sets that week. Uh, no point in showing you guys the accessory work. So let's move on to the next workout. Uh, so this is my secondary squat workout. So I'm only squatting twice a week and I'm only benching twice a week. Uh, and then same thing with deadlifts twice a week. I got a sleeveless squat though on this day that's going to be a single before my lighter volume stuff. Uh, just building up in RPs just to get my body used to squatting heavy again, especially after I just ran that Bulgarian phase. I'm just trying to do a lot of heavy stuff for right now because I'm not used to heavier loads. Then I got some lighter beltless deadlifts at a three by seven at just set percentages increasing by 2% each week. Then some uh, dumbbell RDLs and some abs and some uh, quad and, and glute work. Um, so that was actually week one where I kind of overshot the RP with a 545 because again, non-competition equipment, the bar rolled up my back, the bar was whipping more, it just sucked. And then the second week, I actually undershot. I only did a 506 pounds for a single at RP6, but look how slow I was going. If you follow me closely, uh, you'll know that I'm actually standing a lot wider there uh, for that single. So I was trying to work into a new squat pattern to hopefully get some better long-term results, stand a little bit wider. I've always been narrower in my squat stance. I just flare a lot of my, uh, uh, my hips. I, I get a lot of external rotation. So it seems like I squat very wide, but I actually don't. I squat very narrow. So I'm trying to widen my squat stance at how I used to squat a few years ago. And I think that might be better for the long-term, but that's me finishing up the, the volume squats after the heavy single, uh, for the second week. And you can see I'm delusional and half dancing slash half dying on the floor uh, after doing a set of eight, which I hadn't done in a long time. Uh, and then after that, I got some beltless deads, which on this day went awry. I was supposed to do sets of seven, uh, which I did end up finishing. But this first set got destroyed because the dang plates were rattling loose and um, the platform was super bouncy. So it was just throwing me off. I'm not used to pulling on this platform. I usually pull on a different platform. So I fixed the plates, put some collars on, uh, finished up my reps, accidentally did one extra rep. So I kind of did almost like two sets of four. So kind of like a set of eight instead of a set of seven, but I just miscounted. Um, then finished up the rest of my sets and then went on to some dumbbell RDLs like I had listed super set with abs. Just really working on glute activation and strengthening uh, really good hip hinge form, like super perfect form and tensioned, uh, and then doing some, um, uh, some cat back, uh, ab crunches here, um, with some weight, the full stack idea here is mostly tension and just, uh, not so much overload with the dumbbell RDLs. Uh, then went on to some Larson press. So this is my secondary bench workout and I am only doing four workouts a week as of right now, but I got a comp bench, uh, for a one by five at the RPs. Now I am doing a Larson press here. I give myself the option to do Larson press cause I'm pretty good at it anyway. Uh, just in case I'm dealing with some pain, but same setup where I got a heavier top set followed by a ton of volume on the back off. Then I got some dumbbell bench, uh, and then just more accessory work to, to finish up there. So I did my top set, uh, with the Larson and then my back offs also with the Larson press. Uh, my Larson press is so good that I can do my working weights and my top sets pretty much at the same loads I can do my comp bench with. Um, and this is just something I've had to get used to because of this pec tendinopathy I've dealt with here and there. I'm not actually really feeling it right now, but just to stay safe, um, these first couple weeks of prep, I just decided to do the Larson that day. Um, then I got some dumbbell bench sets of 12 with the hundreds, uh, at like, honestly, our RP sub six, I could probably do these for about anywhere from 15 to 20 reps on any given day. 
Um, then got some rowing, uh, then some pull downs, uh, some single arm pull downs with external rotation and nothing too fancy there. Um, I'm going to keep you guys updated real quick video here, just kind of going over my month in training and then I'll do another two of these, uh, and then probably a meat recap video. And then hopefully if everything goes according to plan, I'll release some kind of quad tendinopathy plan for you guys to get around your, uh, tendinopathy, especially if you're doing with quad tendinopathy in the gym, if this video, uh, helped you out. Give it a thumbs up, share it. That's actually the biggest thing is sharing my videos. If you can, please, that really helps out the channel, spreads the knowledge and the love. Uh, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.